Hello and welcome back to Will It Work? Today we're going to take a look at the Panasonic SuperDisc 240 drive, the successor to the Imation SuperDisc, also known as the LS120 drive that I featured many times on my channel. Now that drive died last year and rather than replace it, I've been waiting to get hold of one of these 240 megabyte drives. They're really rare compared to the LS120. So I finally got one from Japan and let's take a look at it. I think the first thing you're going to notice is how small it is. The LS120 USB drives were quite large, longer, taller, and they had an AC adapter to give them power. They were not bus powered. This here is basically the exact same size as my regular USB floppy drive. So it's quite an improvement on space and convenience. Now, as the name suggests, this can take a new 240 megabyte disk as well as being backward compatible with the 120 megabyte disk, the 1.4 megabyte floppies, and the old double-sided, double-density 720 kilobyte floppies. In addition to that, this also can do a special 32 megabyte floppy, which I'll save for the end, along with another obscure floppy format, and we'll find out if this is, in fact, the best USB floppy drive that you can buy. So, let's get started on testing this out. Okay, so let's first try the new 240 megabyte super disk. Hey, there it is. These pictures are about almost five megabytes, quite a bit larger than they would have been back in the day, over 20 years ago when this drive came out. Super disks are not fast. Zip disks are faster. But it will come through eventually, I bet. There we go. Okay, on to the next disc. Okay, well I still have my LS120 disc from my old drive that's now broken. Let's try this one out. And that one worked as well. On to the next. Okay, so this is just a standard 1.4 megabyte floppy. If you remember from my earlier videos, the iPhone can't connect to USB floppy drives, but it does work with these super disk drives, so it's kind of a backdoor way to get an old-fashioned floppy to work on the iPhone. Let's try it out in the 240 drive. Another success. And here is a 720K double-sided double density disc. Let's try that out. All right, another success. And now let's get to the interesting stuff. Okay, so the SuperDisc 240 has the ability to turn a regular 1.4 megabyte floppy disk into a 32 megabyte floppy disk. Doesn't that sound crazy? But it's actually true. Now, a couple of caveats. First of all, you have to use this 32 megabyte floppy in the SuperDisc 240 drive. You can't just stick it in to a USB floppy drive or even the old LS120 drive. The other caveat is, is that it's read only. It works very much like a CDRW. And if you remember back in the day, you used to have to have special software to burn CDs before it was integrated into the operating system. Same thing here. It's got a program called Super Writer 32. You put it in, you launch it, and you drag the files into a window 
that you want to write to the 32 megabyte floppy and it takes quite a while but it does it and then it's in read only mode so if you want to change anything on it you have to bring it back to the special software wipe the thing clean and start over so those are pretty big gotchas i don't know how much this was actually used but it is really cool from a technological point of view so let's test this out on the iphone and see if it can read this 32 megabyte floppy Hey, there it is. Let's go in and um, see if I can bring up the info on this. And if you can read down here, you can see it. this folder of pictures is 15.9 megabytes. Obviously, that wouldn't fit on a traditional 1.4 floppy disk. But it works pretty well. These are smaller pictures. They should come up a little quicker than... The earlier ones I had. Yeah. Yeah. So it works great on the iPhone. Do you know what it doesn't work on? The Mac OS. I'm not kidding. It doesn't work on the Mac OS. It won't mount. I can see it in the disk utility program. I can even image it from there and open up the image you get to the files, but it won't mount the actual disk. And if you try to mount it from the disk utility program, you'll get an error. So I looked that error up. And basically it has something to do with the Mac OS not supporting all the block sizes that Windows can make a disk, just the standard ones. And that kind of makes sense among all the tricks probably to get 32 megabytes to fit on one of these traditional 1.4 disks. Um, probably playing around with the block size is a big part of that. So that was really odd. It did work on any flavor of Windows I put it on. Um, 98 all the way through Windows 11, just USB mass storage like you'd expect. I even have a couple of old versions of the Mac OS virtualized all the way back to Leopard 10.5, and it didn't work on any of those either. So it wasn't just an issue with um, the modern Mac OS. And I have an old G3 Wall Street laptop running 8.6 and 9.2. I put it in that, and while it would mount and I could get into the pictures, Every five seconds or so, it would tell me there was some kind of disk error and something was corrupt on it. You dismiss the message and it would come back a few seconds later. So, yeah, the Mac OS, old and new, does not like this format at all. But the iPhone, absolutely no problem. I also tried it out on Mint and Ubuntu Linux. It would not mount on either one of those two. It would come up on my LG TV running the web OS, although it took a while. And I have two Sony Blu-ray players, a 4K and an old 1080p one. The 4K one mounted it with no problem whatsoever. The 1080p one, the old one, it would lock up or give me error messages that the device wasn't supported. So real hit or miss on the 32 megabyte floppy. It's neat in concept. I don't know how many people used it. And it's obviously kind of picky with what it works with. But hey, on the iPhone, of all things, it works perfectly. Okay, let's get on to one last special format. So for a long time, I've wanted to make a single-sided three and a half inch floppy disk because the original floppy disk drives in the first couple years were only single-sided, most famously in the original Mac 128K and the Mac 512K, but they use a different encoding scheme that doesn't work on these newer USB PC drives. But if you had a PC back then, you could buy one of these and put it into your computer and DOS supported, of course, um, formatting them on one side, and it's even still there in the command prompt, but I've tried for years to get it to work with my USB drive, and it just said the drive didn't support that, so I thought maybe it was because it was USB, but a friend of mine had a really old computer, I think it was 98 or maybe XP, and with an internal floppy disk drive, and we tried it with that, and we couldn't get it to work either, so I kind of gave up on it. But while I was waiting for this super drive to come in from Japan, I reached out to the community again to see if anybody had a single-sided floppy disk drive and they could make me one of those disks. And Adrian from Adrian's Digital Basement got in touch with me, and he told me about a program called nFormat, which I'd heard of before, but I'd never used. It looks like a little DOS program, but it works just fine in XP. And it lets you control all aspects of formatting. And 
I went in and I made a 360K disc on a double-sided normal 720K. And I thought, great. And then when I started looking at it, I was like, oh, it's still double-sided. It's just capped at 360 kilobytes. So I went back in and really dove into the settings. And you can force it to be single-sided 80-track 300K drive. And I hit the button and it formatted it. And I knew it worked right away because it sounds different. I've had this USB floppy drive for years. I know exactly how it sounds. And when with only one head engaged, it sounds subtly different. And it seems to take longer, too, to like write and read data. So I knew it was working. And then, of course, I brought it back to my Mac and imaged it, ran it through some floppy uh, track viewing software I have, and confirmed that it's single-sided data only on one side. And that's what I have here. This is a real blast from the past. This would be from the 84, 85 era. Now this does, of course, like I said, work in my regular USB floppy drive. Let's see if it works in the SuperDisk 240 and completes the whole spectrum of disks that this thing supports. Wow, there it is. There it is. Single-sided, double density, 360 kilobyte, three and a half inch, floppy disk working in this as well. Wow, you know, this really is the ultimate USB floppy drive. I mean, it can take 240 megabytes, 120 megabytes, 32 megabytes in some situations, 1.4 megabytes, 720 kilobyte, and even a single-sided 360 kilobyte drive. Very, very impressed with this Panasonic SuperDisc 240. Well, that's going to do it for now. I hope you're enjoying these videos. Please like and subscribe. I'll be back soon, but that's all for now. Take care.